thank you again for joining us today. It's going to be a really awesome uh, session. We have with us Coach Trinity Grimes, and I'm really excited about this one because she's going to be talking about emotions. And as you know, 2020 has been uh, a roller coaster ride for all of us, me included. You know, emotions going up and down, emotions from the past coming back. <laughs> Uh, and um, yeah, so hopefully today uh, Trinity is going to be uh, giving us some tips, hopefully, of how to process emotions as we leave 2020, going into 2021. Um, just as a background as well, we were just chatting about this uh, just before we started, that Trinity is also part of the Jay Shetty uh, Certification School. Uh, and um, it's, it's, uh, it's an honor to have uh, Trinity as well, because uh, as you know, the school is excellent in, in developing, uh, I, I think, awesome coaches, you know, uh, from Jay's own uh, personal background and the school itself. So I think it's a really useful and exciting setup that they've got there. Um, so without further ado, the famous words from Jay Shetty himself, <laughs> I'm going to hand it over to Trinity. On you go, Trinity. Thank you. Hi. Yeah. Um, so I just kind of wanted to started, get started with um, one kind of an introduction of myself for those who don't know me. Um, so I was introduced to life coaching probably about three years ago. And my original life coach, um, she did a lot of work along the lines of like managing your thoughts. And um, she did a lot of work uh, teaching me about how the brain works and um, about emotions and things like that. And then I was introduced to the Jay Shetty program because I started doing his, um, his meditations daily when quarantine first started. And um, he takes a completely different approach to coaching that I had been um, using for the past few years. So I kind of have this, um, I don't know if skill set would be the right word, but within me of two very different types of coaches. And I've been coached by multiple coaches since being in the school, right? Um, and have learned so many different styles and techniques. Um, but uh, when I first started coaching, I was coaching in this thought work, like how to um, manage your thoughts to create the outcomes that you want in life. And so a lot of what I'll be talking about today is more from that perspective. Um, but I've been lucky enough to have, um, I, to have some experiences with the Jay Shetty program and to bring kind of more of his, the answers are within you, um, method into my coaching. So, um, another little thing about me, I'm, uh, I'm a mom. I have five kids from ages 17 to seven, and I have been married for almost 20 years. And so those two things are my main um, experiences in this life that show me, but I mean, they're why I'm here, right? Um, so that's just a little bit about me. And then I also wanted to take a moment if we could and um, just get really present and connected in this moment with everybody who's here live, if we could do this. And maybe even just in the recording, if you're watching this afterwards, take some time to do this with us. But I just wanted to do a few deep breaths and like bring us like in, in an intentional space. Um, especially where we're talking about such a highly charged topic as emotions. So if everybody will just kind of close their eyes and um, we'll start it just like one deep cleansing breath in and then out. And then if you just want to do that three times at your own pace. And while your eyes are still closed, I just kind of wanted to bring you, invite you into your body to let you um, connect and feel whatever it is that your body is trying to communicate with you today. Um, and um, just open up that heart and let whatever needs to come out, come out. 
And then whenever you are ready, go ahead and open your eyes. Okay. All right. Thanks, guys. Um, so I want this definitely to be a discussion and whatever. Feel free to ask questions, throw them in the chat box. Camille, I don't think I'll be able to see the, the questions, right? Sure. Um, if you, I, I'm not sure if you can see there's a chat icon. You can click that and then the chat box. Anyway, I'll prompt you. Okay. How about, yeah, I'll have you, I'll let you. Sounds good. Thanks, Camille. Um, okay. So um, the first thing we're going to talk about, I, so I'm going to show it to you guys because I'm such a visual person and I love colors and it's probably going to be backwards, but I have my like seven steps to how I process emotion. It's actually six to process emotion. Like there are those times where you're like in the carpool lane, right? And somebody cuts you off and you get frustrated, but you know, you got to be present when your kids get in the car. So you have to process that emotion quick. So this is one of like the first tips are how to process emotion in the moment when it's just a quick, like, I'm going to let that move through me moment. And then after that, we'll talk about a little bit deeper dive of how to process emotions when you have some time to yourself and you can really dive into the, to the feelings and emotions. So the first step, and you, if it doesn't work for you to do it in this exact order, you can do it however it needs to happen for you. This is just how it works for me the best. First step is to name it. And this is something that was really, really, really hard for me in the beginning when I started to process emotion because I realized how often I don't even know the name of the emotion that I'm trying to like process. Because we know like happy, sad, angry, you know, and that's about it. <laughs> like, um, but one thing that I found really helpful that was given to me years and years ago by a mentor is she gave me a list of emotions. And um, it's just that simple little like the different smiley faces. What are you feeling right now? And um, if you look up Brene Brown's core emotions, she has a really good, like, these are the core emotions and then all other emotions come off of these. Um, I'm a huge fan of Brene Brown and her work. And so I will refer you to her often, <laughs> but Brene has, um, all kinds. You can just Google it and you can get any kind of chart. If you are in a space where you don't necessarily have that already in your brain to know what emotion. So um, for the most part, emotions are one word. Sometimes they can be like two words, but if they're more than one or two words, then you're not um, identifying an emotion. You're identifying a thought. And so um, it's really key when you're processing it to try and identify the emotion, not the thought behind it. The thought behind it is what creates the emotion, but um, it can send you off onto a completely different tangent. So after you find your, or after you name your emotion, the second thing that I do is find it in my body. So um, emotions are just, um, chemicals that our brain releases because we think a thought. So when we think the thought, you know, oh, I don't have enough time to get everything done today, then the brain releases a correlating um, chemical that creates overwhelm within the body. And then overwhelm can show up as like a shortness of breath or a tightness in the chest or, you know, so if you find the name of the word and we're saying it's overwhelm, then take a moment and find it in your body. Like sadness for me often lies in my stomach or it, like I feel it in my eyes, my eyes start to get misty, you know? So taking that moment to find where it's at in your body. Um, I remember when we were doing this with my, one of my oldest, when he was young, he said anger was in his fists. Whenever he would feel anger, he would feel his fists start to tighten. Um, so it really can be anywhere. Um, so 
take that time to find it in your body, feel where that chemical is vibrating. And um, when you find it, the next step is to relax into it. Our key, like our natural instinct is to push it away, to like resist it. You feel it in your fist and you're like, no, 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 I'm not. I don't want to feel this anger. I don't want to feel, you know, whatever, like we feel our, our eyes start to well up because we're going to cry and we push it away. Right. Like, no, I'm not going to cry. And so it's that finding it in your body and then just relaxing into it. Work on like relaxing all the muscles around the area and the area where, especially where it's showing up the most. Um, and then the step four would be to feel it. But at that point, you like you're relaxing into it and you just allow yourself to feel the lump in your throat or the tightness in your chest. Um, and you just take that moment to be like, okay, this is just a chemical in my body. Where is it vibrating? What does that feel like? And um, what we talk about, especially with my kids, is um, explaining what it feels like. Like talk yourself through that. Talk your talk to yourself as though you're saying it to somebody who's never felt that emotion before. Like, oh, I feel a tightness in my chest and it's getting hard to breathe. And, you know, like just talk yourself through it um, quickly. You don't, you, we're not saying all of these steps are pretty rapid. I'm not saying you have to really sit in these things and like really get intense in your emotions, but just acknowledging it. And um, then the fifth step is visualization. Um, I often give it a color or a texture or, you know, like when I feel sadness, my brain associates that with blue. And I'm like, oh, and, and sadness feels like kind of smooth and like, like tears running down my face, right? So I take that time to like picture it, give it something that you can hold on to that's not just, this is fear, this is panic, this is, you know, give it something to visualize. Um, and then allow it, keep allowing this to come because emotions will come in waves and so allow it to come and then it'll go kind of, it'll kind of go away and you'll be like, okay, I think I'm done. But when it comes back, you just kind of go back into that relaxing and allowing it and it will keep coming. At first it will be more intense and then it will kind of like um, the intensive, the intensity will start to um, lessen as you go through it. And then you'll just be able to feel like, okay, this is where, this is where it's gone, right? And um, these these steps, like you can move through them in a matter of three or four minutes. Or like I said, you know, if you're in a place where you're trying to really dive deep and find layered emotions, it can take a while. So. That's kind of the outline. Does anybody have any questions on that? And then I can dive deeper into anything uh, from there. Trin, sorry, I missed step six. What was it again? Step six? Step five? Step six. Visualization, picture the emotion. Picture it. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh -huh. step and six. step six is allow it to come up and go as, as much as it needs to. Like the, so allow it, but it's like that wave, like allow it to come up and then go away and then come up and go away as much as it needs to until it works its way through your system. Excellent. Sorry, I'm just, I'm just typing the steps right now in the chat box just for... for oh, great. I love that. Thanks, Camille. So yeah. Got six steps to process emotions. I think that's, that's really interesting. Um, I have a few questions of my own, but I, I want to open it to the floor first. Uh, if, if anyone wants to ask or any, any tips uh, from your own personal experience of how to, to overcome um, yeah. Camille, I don't know if it's um, only me, but your tone is uh, really quiet compared oh, to voice? the other. Is it my, no. my, 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 I think my the microphone. Is that, is that better if I, if I take it off? Can you hear me? Is it also with you or is it only at my place? Because you are much louder than Camille, no? 
Camille's voice got softer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> can, can you hear me now? No? I can hear you. Like, yeah. <laughs> but I'm also a super way? loud talker, so <laughs> it could be that. No, 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 no. It's, it's just a qu the quality. I just wanted to say because sure. uh, it, it I, I thought now? it would be just. Hmm? Is it better now? A bit better, yeah. A bit better, okay. Yeah, oh, yeah, it's better. <laughs> okay, I'll keep it off, fine. Uh, sorry, yeah, I, I said that, uh, I do apologize. I, I said that I have a few questions of my own, but again, open it up to the floor, Frida, uh, Nadine, Steph, uh, Omar, Alfia, if you have any specific questions uh, on this, uh, feel, feel free, you know, um, put up your hand or kind of just ch put it in a t uh, chat box, by all means. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's not a question. I mean, I for me, it's really new and I find it super interesting and it sounds so uh, good because the only thing I knew was like realizing what it is and uh, radical acceptance of emotions and that's it pretty much. Or you have like these emotional cards, I don't know if you know them, where you have with the kids for them to explain about the emoticons how do they feel or like if there will be uh, if there would be pictures like name them but um, just as a feedback I find the whole process totally um, it feels really natural and I'm really grateful uh, for this because uh, yeah new for me thank you yeah. Camille were you did you have another question Sorry, or? yeah um, uh, thanks, thanks for sharing, Frida. Again, I think like, I, I echo what, can you, can you hear me? I just want to check yes. before. <laughs> okay. Um, as, I echo what Frida is saying because again, uh, emotions usually they just come and you, I, I don't know how to deal with it. I mean, you know, I'll give an example, like, uh, maybe something that you can maybe expand on, uh, Trin. Um, you know, on a daily basis, I, I, I would, I still do, I get this email, right? I get this email where it just, it just puts me off, you know, uh, you know, it just hits me off my bike, basically, you know, all of a sudden, mm -hmm. and suddenly, um, you know, I, I start to freeze, right? Um, where I start panicking, I start thinking about the things that are not even here yet, but I'm, I'm thinking my mind's going 100 miles an hour, right? <laughs> of all the things that could go wrong <laughs> and it's just an email it's just like digital text on a screen but somehow it's i'm i'm like freaking out it's doing something to me and yeah. I, you know how do i deal with uh, with you know things like that you know it's, it's it is it is a a challenge yeah oh i really love that example camille yes thank you um so i i I have a question. Can we just kind of like you and I work through this for a minute? Sure, yeah, if yeah. you're okay, if you feel okay with that. Yeah. So what, what is the one word emotion that you feel like maybe you could put on that? Okay, this is, this is great because I've never done this before. So I, I, in a, uh, I'm going to have to find, I'm going to have to go into a moment uh, yeah. where, you. you know, this thing happened. Um, I'll probably say fear. I mean, I don't know. Maybe my book vocab yeah. is not as as as, uh, yeah. as extense, but the first thing that I can feel is fear. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, a fear of um, email comes in. I know that for a fact, my uh, my heart starts pounding. Right. Mm -hmm. I get that kind of. Uh, and then I guess, you know, kind of a lump, if you want to describe it, a lump in my throat, you know, where mm -hmm. I'm like, you know, um, I need water, <laughs> you know, I'm starting yeah. to kind of, you know, lose, you know, lose, uh, I guess, you know, uh, yeah, heart starts pounding, lump in my throat, there's a fear uh, yeah. That, yeah, of attached to this email, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that makes perfect sense. And it's so funny how we often want to like make it something deeper, right? But really, so much of the time, our emotion that is surfacing is going to be fear. Because 
um, our brain is like, something is wrong here. Something is wrong here. And so it starts sending off all these signals like, oh my gosh, all of this can go wrong. And so this is where the information that our thoughts create our feelings is really, really key, right? Because um, what happens is you open the email and then you start to think all the thoughts like, oh my gosh, I have, this isn't ready yet or this, da, 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 da. and especially if it's an email that comes from somebody like, um, who's like the next up in line for you. Like, let's just say it's a work email. Right. And, and it's like your boss and he's saying, Hey, Camille, where's this project? Um, and so your brain starts to think all these thoughts of like, Oh, I haven't done this part. I haven't done that part. And immediately as we think those thoughts, as quickly as we think them, our brain starts to release those chemicals. Right. And the chemical is fear, like whatever the chemical that coincides with that is shows up in our body as fear. Um, and so this is where, um, it gets like, you could like do the, there's two different ways you could go here. Right. You like, let's say you're at the office when this happens, you obviously don't want to be like, okay, I'm going to confront this fear. <laughs> like I'm going to start journaling it out and going really deep. And I'm going to dive into this fear because there's a time and a place. Right. So if you're at the office and this email comes in at that point, it's just a matter of running through those things. Like you just did. Right. You were like, Oh, it's fear. It feels like a lump in my throat. My heart starts to race. And then when you hit that stage, that's where most people clamp down. They shove it away. But this is where if you can get to that step three, which is relax into it, where you're just sitting at your computer and you just take a breath and you're like, oh, whoa. Yeah, that's fear. That, that it, fear just came up in me right now. And you're yeah, just kind of like. I think this is where I, I stop. I, I like you've just described it there. I, I freeze at that stage. I freeze, and then mm -hmm. I would do something irrational, <laughs> like yeah. start writing again. Uh, yeah. start, you know, start reacting. I, I guess to that thing yes. rather than step three, which is where, which is the missing piece right here for me. Yeah, to relax into it exactly, and. Um, I was, I was on a genius se session with Jay and he was talking about the difference between feelings and emotions. And he was saying feelings are something that just they're fleeting. They pop up really quick and they go away. Um, an emotion is when we've felt that feeling so many times that it becomes an emotion, like it becomes your wired reaction to something. So especially like with this email, right? Like, it comes in often enough that your body just automatically tenses up because it's now gone from a feeling that maybe would have the first few times just like moved through you to an emotion where now it's like, it's kind of a way of being like, Oh, now I'm in this fear. Um, and so it is really that point where you like, you've named it, you know, where it's at. And now you just, you get to allow it, you get to feel it, picture it. And like, so the allowing part is relaxing into it, feeling it and picturing it, visualizing it, whatever, allowing that to be in your body and know, like I'm in my body with fear right now and I'm okay. Like I'm still at the office. I don't have to do something drastic to move fear out of my system. I can just keep working. And then when the time is right, right? Like this isn't something that you need to just keep ignoring because if it's something that's reoccurring at some point, you're going to want to dive deep into it and be like, okay, why is this fear surfacing in me every time I get this email? Like at some point you're going to want to actually face and work through the emotion on a deeper level. But while you're at the office, obviously isn't the time for that. Um, and so like, as we're going through those six steps and you've relaxed into it, my next step, if I'm in a place where I can't dive deep into an emotion is I give myself permission to like, okay, tonight at seven o'clock, I'm going to write out what, what the heck this fear is in me. Like what's going on here? Like I set an appointment with myself. Um, and before I was skilled enough to be able to set that appointment with myself, I would set that appointment with my coach. I would set that appointment with, you know, a good friend that I knew, like, 
could stay neutral in a situation, or I would set that appointment with somebody that I could talk to because oftentimes, although we have the answers inside of us, especially when we're dealing with emotion, it's really hard to um, sit down and just get to the bottom of it. Sometimes we just need that person. This is where mentors and coaches and therapists are so key to our mental health, right? We need somebody who can hold space neutrally for us to find the root of that fear or whatever emotion it is that's coming up at the time. Awesome. Thank you. Th thanks, Trina. I, mean, I, I think, um, you know, I, like, like you just described there, I, I usually kind of just go to kind of step two and then I start freaking out <laughs> and start freaking out and start doing all these irrational things. And I guess, you know, relaxing into it and I guess stepping back, like you described, stepping back, observing it, let it, let it come through. And then I guess, you know, that, I guess visualizing, uh, visualizing it, I guess maybe it would, would probably help as well. Just picturing that. But what is this thing that I'm fearful of? You know, what is this, you know, all these things that I think could go wrong. Again, I think it's just one of those things where, you know, they say 99% of the things that you think are possibly going to, uh, are, that you think are going to go wrong aren't, you know, they, they don't, they never happen, right? <laughs> and it's all in our heads. We're just making it up. So I guess just needing to kind of remind myself of that whenever that next email comes up. And just, yeah. you know, like you say, step back, you know, allow, allow this emotion. What, what you said at the beginning was quite important as well. Don't, don't uh, suppress the emotion, allow it to, to come through. Uh, because mm -hmm. for most, you know, another thing that I sometimes do is, you know, looking back in my life, I used to kind of suppress certain emotions. And I guess that's not really healthy to, to be suppressing emotions. Yeah. And I think it's really great that we're doing this with like male and female, right? Because I think there is in a lot of cultures, I know, you know, I'm from the United States and there's a huge culture around men being strong and like men don't feel emotion and men, you know, and it's really interesting because one of the things I found out as I was um, preparing for this webinar and I was giving out all these different options, like asking my my people what would you want and almost all of the responses on processing emotion came from men because i think there's kind of this stigma around them that they're not allowed to actually feel what's going on they just have to they they buckle down like you know all that rub some dirt in it that's a you know my you're little just, brother was told that you just been told time. to just just deal with it right you just say just just deal with it what does deal with it mean <laughs> Exactly. Yes. Like, what does it mean to just, you know, push through? Um, or what? Yeah. What does it mean to deal with it and not just push through? Sorry, my little ones are waking up. So you're going to hear their footprints <laughs> as they walk past. But um, so that's where that huge piece of relaxing into it and not pushing back. Because um, and I was raised in a household where even though I'm a female, I was not allowed to really like, I'm a big crier at almost every emotion within me, like everything from joy to fear to everything in between surfaces in me with tears. And um, it made the people around me very uncomfortable. And so I was taught over and over and over again, just stop, stop crying, stop, stop, stop. So I was taught my whole life to just push it down. And it was like, so one of the things that comes up a lot when I'm talking to people about processing, processing emotion is they're like, well, if I lean into this, it's just going to make it worse. Like my emotions are just going to go crazy. I'm just going to be sitting in it and I, I'm not going to focus on it. I'm just, I have to keep moving. I have to distract myself. I have to whatever. But what that does is um, it's like holding a beach ball underwater, right? Um, you're just going to have to keep pushing harder and harder to keep it down. And eventually that thing's just going to pop up. And half the time it hits you in the face. <laughs> like that's what happens with our emotions. When we just keep pushing them away and pushing them away, they become stronger. They don't go away. They get stronger. And then when they, <laughs> when they finally surface, hi buddy, good morning. I love you. 
Um, sorry. Uh, <laughs> my six-year-old just woke up. Anyway, um, so as we hold them down and they get stronger and stronger and stronger, then they explode in ways that we don't want to, right? Like, especially um, when I'm at work and I'm in like a, situ a situation that's really stressful and I push it away because I'm at work and I can't deal with it, I do find I come home and I snap at my kids more because I've got all this built up, like, ah. But if you let go of the beach ball and just let it float on the surface of the water, eventually it will just float away, right? Like eventually it'll just go. And so that's kind of, these steps aren't like wallowing in self-pity. It's, oh, I'm feeling self-pity right now. I'm, my ego was really hit by that. I'm feeling some self-doubt um, or whatever. And so then you put a name on it, relax into it and let it go rather than like, like muscling down and like, I got to send an email or I got to react. I really like what you said, Camille, when you said you go reactionary because that's what we do when we're in emotion, we react instead of respond. So. Oh, you're on, you're on mute, Frida. <laughs> and I'll follow you when you're. So, sorry. Um, yeah, I was so fascinated because I thought, I, hey, do we get the same emails or what? So <laughs> just um, everything you said, like exactly my reaction um, instead of responding, I've, it's been become much better. But um, at this point, I wanted to dive deeper because for me, it was really uh, kind of an addictive issue like this kind of reacting and then, oh, ah, and re reacting and um, in a personal relationship when um, I was triggered so much. So um, to get away from this, um, and now I have a special folder for this person so um, that I know I need to be in a certain space, emotional space for myself when I look at it. Yeah. And so, but um, I know this, can become an addiction and I definitely was into this and did not realize how can I behave different mm -hmm. for years I mean so uh, the only um, tip somebody gave me like write uh, write it down um, your anger down yeah <laughs> there, there is no time in between the yeah. reaction to, to 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 do so so that it was not a good tip I uh, for me so yeah. um, this, this would have been much more helpful because it really allows you to, I mean, to um, detach a bit. Even if you allow it, you detach in a certain way. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Thank you so much for that, Frida. I agree. Um, so there's the one piece that I learned because I was taught the same as you, like, Oh, if you're going to process emotion, you, you, you got to sit down and write it out and like really go into it and feel it. And, and that is super powerful, but there's not always time to do that in the moment. Right. And what I learned through my years of processing emotion and doing it that way, writing it out and all the journal entries and like, like I was, I've said a few times that will be in that deep dive part that we'll talk about in a minute. But, um, until you've done that enough outside of the emotion, like you have to be able to write about your emotion when you're not in the middle of it. And until you've practiced writing about emotions outside of the emotion, it's really, really difficult to write about an emotion while you're in the emotion. Um, but it is something that is a really powerful tool once you've reached a certain level of practice and awareness, right? So yeah, it, I really appreciate that. And I do like what you said, like this is, a, this is just a practical way to move through it in the moment. So thanks, Rita. Stephanie, were you gonna ask a question? Yeah, I, um, I love the beach ball analogy. Um, <laughs> I think that's such a good visual. Um, I was thinking about the, the experience that I, so sometimes find myself in, which is judging my feelings and emotions, like, and then getting stuck in that spiral of, 
like, why are you feeling this way? You shouldn't be feeling this way. Mm -hmm. Um, And all the shoulds and, you know, that, that judgment. Um, And I'm wondering what your thoughts are about how to, how to let go of the judgments, I guess. Um, Growing up, we had a family where like, it was not appropriate or acceptable to show strong emotions. And there was this feeling of like, there's something wrong with you. Or that's how I felt anyway. Like what's, what's wrong with me that I can't sort of get a handle on how I'm feeling. Um, I'm just curious. I, I have to imagine I'm not the only one who feels, who feels that way or has experienced that. I'm just curious about your, um, what your thoughts are. I am so glad that you asked that question because that's the next topic that I was going to talk about and it's called layering emotions. Um, So the first thing that we do when we become aware of our thoughts and our feelings is we start to judge the shit out of them. Like, listen, oh, I should know better. I should know better. I should know better. Um, And so when my, I remember being in that exact space and my coach said to me, um, curiosity curiosity is the key here talk to yourself the way you would talk to somebody you love like your kid or your spouse or like okay like look i'm just going to go back to camille's um his email uh example so like you're in it and let's say you you're at lunch so you have a few more minutes right you don't have to move on to your next task so you've gone through that quick steps of like naming it, blah, 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 blah. And then um, like Stephanie said, oftentimes one of the places we get stuck in resisting it is saying, I shouldn't feel this way. Like that, we tell ourselves that all the time. Oh, this is stupid. I shouldn't feel fear over an email. This is absolutely ridiculous. And then we like try, that's how we try to push it away. Right. We, um, we judge what we're doing and all we're doing is layering emotions. So now you're pushing two beach balls down instead of just one. Like now you're like pushing them down and you're like, Oh, it's it's even harder. Right. Um, And uh, we start to the, the other kind of analogy that my coach used with me was she was talking about when we are layering emotions, we start to build like a brick wall and then it gets to the point where we're up here and we can't even remember what we were afraid of down here because we've piled so many different emotions on top of them. So this is where talking to yourself, like you would talk to somebody you love, like, Oh wow, I'm feeling fear right now. Why am I feeling fear? What's going on with me? Like, and just start asking yourself questions instead of going into the space of, oh, I can't believe I'm feeling fear again. Come on. I've done this a million times. Like instead of going into that space, try to take that conscious, use your conscious energy into why am I feeling fear? Like what's going on with me? Like what? It, and it can be like, honestly, one of the main things that ways that we have emotional triggers are we're hungry. We're t- tired or stressed out, you know, we have all these other things. And it literally can be you take on this email right before you go to lunch and you're hungry and you're stressed and you're like, I don't even have the capacity to take this email. Right. So it's taking that inventory within yourself in the moment. And this is another one of those things like Frida was talking about. It takes so much practice. Like the first time you do this, it's not just going to be like, Oh, that was the magical key. And now I'll do it every time. It's going to take you like later on in the day saying, oh, I felt fear. And then I judged myself for that fear. And then you go, okay, so next time I'm going to practice, like what, how do I practice that curiosity versus judgment, asking questions, like it's all the self-coaching stuff, right? Um, Taking that time to ask ourselves the questions instead of layering the shoulds on top of the already emotion the emotion that's already there. And one more thing about that too, is this is another way where um, having somebody to reach out to in those moments are really, really helpful. When you start to layer your emotion and you, then you get under it, then like you're, you're fully in the emotion. That's when it's really nice to have somebody to reach out to. 
think Frida, Frida has a, a question. Not a question, actually, um, but um, something to share. I, um, I, I went uh, to mindfulness the last year, and this was really something would help me um, um, realizing when I'm identified with certain emotions. So to, ha to learn to detach from them. And my mindfulness teacher, he works with the work of Byron Katie. I don't know if you're familiar with this. This one really helped me. So this would be a good um, addition. Like, I don't know if, if you want to elaborate, if you, if you also use it. I don't know. Yeah, why don't you, I would like you well, to I tell me. Um, you know, for example, I was always saying, he should not do this. It was, a, and and I realized, um, um, I re reacted on this shouldn't. He shouldn't do this, or he shouldn't do this because it's not right. Because I I am right, he is wrong. So um, then I thought of, uh, the work would be um, to um, make the opposite out of it. So yeah, he should do this. For example, he should yeah. do this. Then mm -hmm. another example could be could be um, if he should do this, I shouldn't do this. I shouldn't react like this. I shouldn't. So um, it, um, it helped me to um, get rid of this addictive thoughts, which lead to certain emotions. Mm -hmm. So um, to accept what it is and that I'm not the one who has control over the actions of another person and I'm not the one to judge if it's right or wrong because as soon as it um, hurts myself then I'm not doing a good job here so it's just um, not helpful exactly so, yes um so I feel like all the questions you guys are asking is like let's get into this like how do you deeper on a deeper level process emotion right so we've kind of talked about the those six steps of the the quick process, but um, what I hear you guys saying is like, how do we like, okay, now we've done that. Now we've sat at our computer and we've processed through some fear. Like, how do we get to the root of it? Um, and so like, I, I, I find it really interesting, Frida, how you call it like the addiction of the addiction to the thoughts and to the feelings, right? Because it, it really is. And it's, our brain likes to ruminate on things. Just think about it over and over because it thinks that it's solving a problem. So it's like, yeah, I'm just going to keep solving this problem. And it just keeps um, ruminating on the same thought, but that doesn't actually solve anything. It just keeps us locked in our emotions. It keeps us locked in unhealthy patterns. Um, so one of the biggest tips for processing emotion um, on a deeper level is like Frida has already said, um, writing. You take some time and um, you start to just write out all of the thoughts because our thoughts get really slippery when they're in our head. They kind of trick us and we're, we, can't, we can't keep track of them all. But this, like the, the number one tool I teach my clients when we start into processing any type of major emotion is um, just write down all your thoughts about it and you write it down from a place of curiosity. That means like if this email brings up in you the thought, oh, my boss is such an arrogant jerk. He has no idea the pressure that I'm under, right? You write that thought out. You don't clean it up and make it pretty and say, oh, he's such an arrogant jerk. He has no idea what pressure I'm under, but he probably means well right? Like that's what we try to do. We try to like give, we try to soften our whatever it is that we're actually thinking. But when we give ourselves permission to let all the thoughts out, let them out on a piece of paper, just write it, like get all the thoughts out without softening the blow of any of them. Then once they're all out, you can kind of go back and look at them. And it's almost kind of funny to be like, oh, my brain thought that okay, I can see that that's not actually true. And then you can start to find the, the lies that your brain is telling you in order to um, what it thinks is protect itself, right? Because we were, we're hardwired for that fight, flight, or freeze, and we don't have saber-toothed tigers chasing us around all the time. But we do have family members and bosses and 
you know, significant others that trigger that fight, flight, or freeze. And so taking that time, like once you're on the outside of the emotion to really write through it, like, what is it? What were the thoughts that really came to you when you were here, when you opened that email, when you, um, when your sister-in-law said this to you, what were you thinking? And I really like what Frida said about we, one of the most common thoughts that are going to create a negative emotion in us are going to be, um, they shouldn't be doing this. My sister-in-law should not have said that to me. And the truth is like, yeah, she should have, because that's who she is. Right. And what it brought up in you is yours to deal with, not necessarily hers. Right. And so it's that taking ownership over. Yeah. She totally should have done that because that's who she is. That's how she, like I have plenty of evidence in my life that shows up that says, she's going to say that thing to me. She's going to tell me my potatoes are too lumpy and I'm going to have my feelings hurt or whatever. Right. Um, but when we want people, the people around us to be different than they are, that's when we really, really fall into those emotions that don't serve us like resentment and, you know, anger and hurt. But when we can just say, yeah, they totally should have done that. And it's totally makes sense that my response was to be hurt. And just allow yourself and everybody else in your story to just be where you're at. And this is one of those things where it's really not easy to do when you're in the emotion. It's one of those like reflections on the emotion later. You get all the thoughts out on your paper and then you can start to reflect on those thoughts and be like, yeah, this one makes total sense. This one does not. And um, so the... Step number seven for a deep dive is um, my suggestion is with a coach, a therapist, or a mentor um, because it's so much easier to deal with, to talk through somebody, talk through these things um, with somebody who's neutral, right? Like you don't want to go to your mother-in-law and talk about your sister-in-law or you don't want to go to your husband and talk about your sister-in-law. We want to, because we want them to validate us. We want them to be like, oh, no, you're right, she's wrong. Like, but that validation doesn't necessarily help us move through the emotion. So that's where the deep dive is to reach out. Reach out to somebody that's neutral. And um, in the beginning, this is where it's really, really key to have a coach or somebody that you can um, process through things with, because it's really hard to do it on your own in the beginning. It takes practice. It takes mindfulness practice. It takes, you know, awareness, all the things that you guys have suggested and talked about. It takes those, it takes all that practice to be able to do this completely on your own. So um, I'm not saying it can't be done on your own because it can be, but to expedite this process, it is so much better to have a coach or somebody to work through it with. Um, Just somebody to be able to say, oh, what I hear you saying is fear. Like, I can, I hear this fear. Do you want, let's explore that a little more. And just letting them listen. Because um, it's, if Camille's talking to me about this email, it means nothing to me. Like it doesn't, I have no skin in the game. I don't care how he responds to the email. I can just be like, yeah, tell me all the things. Tell me all the reasons this is coming up in you. But if I'm Camille's wife, right, and he comes to me and he's telling me all the things, like I want to be supportive and I want to be there. But in the back of my mind is, oh, my gosh, he can't lose this job. I have to do whatever I have to do to help him get through this so that he just doesn't lose his job, right? And no matter how, like – how self-aware we are, we will always have a little bit of that self-serving part of us, right? Because it's the survival instinct. I'm not saying you can't talk to your spouse. I'm just saying that there are time, there's a time and a place, just like there's a time and a place to process emotion. There's a time and a place to go to somebody that you're emotionally intimate with, with your emotions. And there's a time and a place to seek help from somebody who's outside of the situation. So that my, my 
deep dive number seven is to find somebody outside of the situation. And then once you've practiced, then totally do the self-coaching, do the journaling and the, like I'm at the point now where most of the time I still definitely have to lean on my coaches and my people, but most of the time I can do that deep process alone and then take my discoveries to my coaches and my people. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, Train. That, that's really, really useful. I, I think there's a lot of stuff that I've got from there. Um, and also from uh, Frida and Stephanie and everyone who, who's chipped in. Um, the key thing that I've, I've got from that is one thing that you mentioned about curiosity. That's really interesting. Um, I remember um, listening to a podcast and I think it was one of Jay's podcasts uh, as well. He was talking about curios curiosity and then um, it's, it's basically in a challenging situation to create a story, uh, right? To, to, to replace that gap between you having all these negative thoughts, but actually, well, why not create a positive story which can, can fill that gap? So for example, in my, in my own example there about the email, maybe stepping back and creating a story, well, why did this person write this email in such a way? Oh, maybe they've had a, a, a challenging day and they're reporting to someone else. So they're getting heat from someone else and they had to somehow let it out. So he's possibly written this email and unfortunately came to me. So I guess creating a, a story, I guess if, if I did it, did it that way, maybe I would have a bit more empathy to that person because, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, well, they've, they've had a bad day, so they've written this email, so maybe I shouldn't take it personally uh, because they're just reacting, they're reacting to something else. So I guess that was quite interesting that I, I took away from what you, you mentioned about curiosity and talking to yourself, like you would talk to someone you love. So giving yourself that chance uh, to, 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 to process what's happening, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Camille. I love what you said. Um, and it is, that is like, oh, I'm so glad because you just really brought it full circle. And I'm, I had forgotten this part. So I'm so glad you brought that up is that um, once we've processed through the emotion, right, we first have to admit that we have fear around the email before we can jump to compassion. Like we have to admit to ourselves like, oh, something came up with me because it is so, it's so, um, it feels easy to jump straight from fear to compassion. Like you, it, you're like, oh, the email comes up and, and then we automatically want to jump to like, okay, I'm going to think the positive thought so that I don't have to feel this negative thought. Right. And so I, um, I really like that you brought it up because it is really important to move into that space of positivity. It's super like the last, that's the last key part is moving into that place of like understanding. That's the like really reflecting on it. Right. Um, and the only thing I would add to that is just make sure that you're allowing yourself the space to relax into your fear first and then be like, okay, fear just went through me. And then before you respond to the email, say, what do you think, like, that's where curiosity comes in. Where do you think that he could be coming from? Um, I, I play this game with my kids all the time where we'll be like, so-and-so did this to them. And I'll be like, what do you think could have been happening for them that they showed up in this way for you? Um, like, my... Um, my youngest daughter, she saw a man who was sitting on the side of the street and he was, you know, panhandling, just had a sign and wanted, wanted some money. And she wanted to give her allowance to him. And I said, okay, it's your money. You do what you want. So we pulled up and we, she gave him her allowance. And then as we drove away, there was this conversation in the car. It was kind of a back and forth between judgment of like, well, why do you think he's this way? And da, da, da. And it started kind of going to a negative space. And my daughter was like, well, what if, and she like shifted it and was like, what if this, 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 and this, like, what if this is his story? And if this is his story, it makes perfect sense for him to be sitting here in the way he is. Right. And so, like you said, it's that 
getting curious and creating a story that takes us to the emotion we want to be in, like compassion. Because it doesn't matter at the end of the day why he's sitting there. It doesn't affect our lives. But we can choose to be annoyed at the fact that he's sitting there or we can choose to dive into this story like maybe he really had a hard time and walk away feeling compassion instead of resentment, right? Um, so I do think, yeah, I really like what you said there about um, getting curious and creating the story that, that helps you to see it from a different perspective. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks for sharing that. Trina. It's a really, really interesting uh, story as well, because I think that's relatable to, to a lot of us. Uh, Frida, you have, uh, you want to say? So, um, related to um, what you said, um, back to the emails again, there's one um, thing I just realized re today. Today, I had the feeling, this is coincidence somehow, that I feel a bit more whole as a person. And it has to do with exactly this kind of, these kind of emotions. So I allowed myself the feeling of fear. And then I dig down to the root of it with the help of a coach. So um, he was really asking, it could not be you understand, it's the other person. Why do you still think so, even if you don't think so. So what's laying deeper, uh, lying on deeper level. So back to childhood stuff. And as soon as I was able to um, connect the different parts of my um, like childhood me's. So the one um, I really like to, and I'm really comfortable with, with the adventurous one, the curious one, and then the sad one and the fearful one and what happened to her. And, so um, as soon as I um, was able to um, relax into it, as you explain, some, uh, I felt a bit more whole and I got, believe it or not, it was an email I maybe got exactly this way two years ago. And I would have judged it, I would have been triggered how, and this time I thought, oh, mm, this person, really is in a bad place and has really not the um, options for himself to react in a different way. And it was not like this blaming somebody for something he can't. So um, it, it's so uh, interesting, but I think all of the steps, if I wouldn't have known them before, it would have probably not have taken me these years to come to this point. So it's just uh, so um, wonderful that um, I get to know all of this by you today. So for future emotions, um, I think it's, it's so helpful. I just needed to share that it's really the, the form, the art, how we react um, and not what's coming in. So um, Yeah, thank you, Frida. I really love that. And yes, that's, I really, really like that you said that. And I also want to just offer you maybe this thought that um, you, you walked the path exactly how you needed to, right? Like it, you needed to be able to go in the ups and downs of like finding those emotions and finding all this information out for yourself. And now the time is right for you to have whatever the clear step are ahead of you. So I am so grateful that you have been so willing and able to um, share all of your insights with us. I'm, I'm so glad you were able to come and thank you. Thank you for showing up today. Um, and Camille, I also wanted to thank you too for your willingness to open up and be, um, be vulnerable with your story and letting us, letting us use your analogy over and over. So. Absolutely. So, no. I, I, again, th thanks. Thanks so much for for doing this. Because again, as as you found out, it's it's a, helping a lot of us. And obviously, this is recorded, so it'll be go. It'll be on social media, and a lot more people. Hopefully, it'll be helping a lot more people as well. Um, so, I, I guess uh, Trin and and everyone. I think we're we're, we're coming up to an hour now. So. Um, I want to thank you again, Trinity, Frida, and everyone who joined today. 
And I thought, you know, I hope this is, has been really, really useful. Um, before we leave, uh, Trin, um, I know you have a coaching practice yourself called Boldly You. Is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how can people contact you um, to, to so, get more information? Yeah. Um, so my main source of contact right now is simply just an email address, and it's boldly.u dot coaching <laughs> at gmail.com or you can follow me on social media under boldly you and direct message me that way um i'm on instagram under boldly you uh and i'm still like i'm still in the process of doing the website and all the other things but for now if um anybody wants to reach out to me that's my email and my um my uh, Instagram are the two most effective ways. And at this time I am taking on a few clients. I'm not, um, I'm not doing any of my normal, like I normally in my coaching practice, I teach, um, I teach webinars and do coaching and do a whole thing. But with me doing schooling, I'm just doing individual coaching right now. So if you're interested in individual coaching, you can reach out to me through my email or through my Instagram and I can work out rates and times and availability and stuff like that. Awesome. So I think uh, what, what I'll do is after this session, I'll, I'll follow up with a, an email with all your contact details so that people can, uh, mm -hmm. people who signed up and joined can, can get in touch with you. Um, yes. And again, it'll be awesome that, you know, if they can, if people want to reach out to you, just kind of jump mm -hmm. on a Zoom call, I guess, uh, discovery mm -hmm. session, uh, and then uh, take it from there. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's the first thing I do with any clients. We do, uh, I do a one hour free session, just a like, let's see if we mesh with each other. Let's see how this works. Um, and after that session, then we, we figure out what we assess what needs to happen next. Awesome. Thank you so much. So again, everyone, if we don't see each other, have an awesome Christmas end of the year and hopefully all this knowledge that Trinity has shared with us and everyone else on, on, uh, on today will take you into 2021 with uh, stronger emotional resilience as we go into the next year. Okay. So uh, thank you again. And I'm going to leave everyone with, uh, I end this with a quote from Les Brown, wherever you are in life, you've made an appointment to be there. And if you've joined in today, you've made an appointment to be with us today to, level uh, or take yourself to the next level in your education and your personal life. Okay. So thank you again. See you guys in 2021. Bye-bye for now. Bye.